Hi there, everybody. Hi, Sean. How you doing, Lenny? Oh, pretty good. Messing around here with my computer. I've got two computers going here so I can read the other PDF and anyway, blah, blah, blah. Cool. That's awesome. I'm sorry I'm late. I was trying to cook some food and so it took I, longer than I thought it would. So I, have, I have to tell you, I was just on a, uh, a Zoom meeting. Oh my goodness, who is that? Hello, uh, Cantor, uh, Janice. Um, I, I was just on a, on a Zoom meeting. Uh, it was a continuation of the high school reunion that I missed uh, earlier this year with a bunch of old friends and stuff. And they, they got together for a Zoom cocktail hour. Okay. Right. So I, I, I just want to tell you that I'm going to be completely useless uh, for this meeting, except for listening. So just want you to know. Right. Thank, thank you for sharing and for disclosing. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, hey, how are you, Myrna? Good. How are you? So, Good. Are there only three of us? Arms being in two. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Did you have All your right. surgery, Janice? Oh, yeah. Over a month ago. And how is it? Are you good? I wish I were better. Let's put oh. it that way. Oh. Hey, Carol. Hello. All right. Well, Janice, in, in that case, I'm gonna, maybe, maybe I should send you some of this or something. It'll help you recover. <laughs> Only if it loosens up my tendons. <laughs> hey, I'll, so make it, <laughs> I'll make any claim you want. Uh, well, okay. So since since Ken is eating, I will. I had a, me a Zoom meeting at seven at six. At, I'm sorry, at five, and I have one at seven. So I was like eating a little. I didn't want to do it in front of everybody, but so oh, well. Joel, Joel <laughs> is that matzah in back of you? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Passover, everyone! You need matzah? I've got plenty extra behind me here. You know. Okay. <laughs> Save it for next year. I think it'll keep. I, I, I believe it will. <laughs> oh, but it won't be Pesachtik anymore unless you isolate it. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one comes from Rish Litzion in Israel, apparently, according to my uh, my son's wife, the best matzah in the whole world. Right. So it's so it's really expensive matzah. <laughs> I guess Your wife so. will I, love it. First time I ever went to a matzo factory was there. <laughs> hi all, hi all. <laughs> hey Joel. Uh oh, did Sean find the right moment and has froze, or is she just in the moment? I think she's in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She looks frozen to me. She does look frozen. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> She's back. Whoa. I just got a message on my computer that says my connection is unstable. So that's, Congratulations. That's where we're at. <laughs> if that's all that's unstable, uh, you're in good shape. Yeah, that, that goes for the rest of us. Too. <laughs> yeah, that's my pet keeps this telling me. This has been the story of. Oh, what that? My iPad keeps telling me on Foursquare, hey, your music, your playing is unstable. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes computers have too much intelligence. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll do my best. This is Maxwell, by the way, everybody. This is Maxwell. He's <laughs> What's the name? Right now. Maxwell. <laughs> He's super cute. You doing okay there? <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, did everybody get the handout I sent? I will be showing it on the screen here. So, if you did not um, get the handout in advance, no worries. It will be shown here. And if you would like me to email it to you afterwards, I am happy to do that if you don't um, have it. Um, so, let's get started. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, 
improvisation, uh, specifically, specifically regarding using scale chords. Um, can you see the handout right now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it wasn't showing on my screen, so, okay. All right. Um, so improvisation specifically, I'm talking about the ability to spontaneously create a melody or accompaniment using what you already know and following your ear. So by what you already know, I'm specifically talking about scales and chords or arpeggios and also melodies of songs. Okay. And uh, what the, the other thing that we'll kind of address here besides the scales and chords is how do you follow your ear? A lot of people say, well, I, I can't tell what that is just by listening to it. So we'll go over a little bit of how to find the melodies that we hear in our heads and how to find those on our instruments. Okay, There's an intermediary step that I think a lot of people uh, forget about when they just try to go from hearing it to playing it on the instrument. And that's why it's so difficult. We're, we're missing the step in between. So let's start with scales and chords. Everybody practiced all the scales and chords I gave you last week? Last week, yeah. The week before? Yeah? Okay, good, good, good. Well, um, we'll go over some of those today just as a review, and I'll actually have you play today. So when we play our instruments, you're going to need to put, you're going to need to mute yourself. But I have a track here that hopefully, um, I've set it up so that you should be able to hear it. Um, so hopefully this works. If not, I'm sorry, I tried. <laughs> okay, some songs uh, give you chord changes and those chord changes show you the form of the song and they use chord symbols to show you what chords are being played and when they change. Okay, here are some examples of chord symbols that you may see. Um, a big C or a C with a capital M, that just means C major. And remember that's just indicating our triad C, E, G, okay? C little dash or C little M is C minor. And that's this, and you guys all practiced these over the last week or so, hopefully. Mm -hmm. C7, uh, we can call it C7 or we can call it C dominant seven, same thing. And that indicates that major triad again, just like that, but with that flat seven on top, okay? Now this one we did not talk about yet, but I wanted to throw it in here hoping Eddie would be here because this is one Eddie would have asked me about if he was here. He would have said, what does this mean? Because I see this a lot in my music. <laughs> so this is for Eddie. This is C6 or C6 over 9. Okay? Eddie apologizes. He's working. Oh, well, I guess that's a good excuse. Well, Hey, you know, we're recording this tonight, so he can watch it later. Um, and then everybody, of course, has the handout. So everybody, even if they're not here tonight, will will be able to go through this. So no worries. So um, yeah, C6 or C major 6, it's just, again, that C major triad. But we add the sixth note of, this, of the key on top, OK, which is why they say 6 here. It's also, you can think about it as a whole step above this note above the fifth of the chord. Either way you want to think about it, that's what that is right there. But you've got nine too. Yep, uh, that we do, and we don't need to worry about the nine, but that's a really good point, Myrna, because um, we can add the nine to it if we want to. And the nine is the same as the second note. The two and the nine kind of are the same thing. Um, so we could add a D on top here or anywhere in the chord, and that would fill that out. But if we see it as a six, nine, or six, it still means this basic same foundation here. I'm glad you brought that up. And then here, C dash seven, or C little m seven, is C minor seven. Same thing as this, but we added the flat seven on top. So our C minor arpeggio with the flat seven on top. And we went over most of those last time, so that should be mostly review. Now, when you see chord changes, you can improvise using only the chord tones. And as a clarinetist, I do that a lot when I'm playing certain types of music. If I am playing uh, gypsy jazz, if I am playing old swing uh, music, um, 
like it, like actual authentic big band type Glenn Miller, Benny Goodman type improvisations, mostly chord tones and uh, Dixieland uh, improvisation as well. I'm, I'm using mostly just the chord tones, um, not a lot of scales. I don't think as much of scales because um, the purpose of, of the clarinet in those genres really sticks more to chord tones and oftentimes, um, especially in Dixieland, less, I, don't, I don't play as mel many melodies. The trumpet player will play the melody and, and I embellish or noodle. So anytime you just improvise with chord tones, it sounds like correct notes because those are the same notes that your rhythm section, meaning your bass player and your piano player are playing when they play the chords, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a really good starting point, just chord tones. So now we're gonna try an example together. So make sure that your mic now is on mute. So go ahead and mute it and I'll check everybody's to make sure that you're all muted. Yeah, you're fine. Good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So um, I put this track here. Hopefully this will work. What we're going to do is we're going to use concert C6, okay, which is that C major with the sixth note on top. And we're going to improvise using just chord tones. You can improvise on your own instrument. You're on mute. So you should just hear the backing track when I start this, okay? Um, here are the notes for you. If you're a C instrument, meaning one of these guys, here are your, your four notes that you get, okay? If you're a B flat instrument, one of these guys, here are your four notes. E flat instruments, your four notes here. And uh, this was for Lenny, if he had his horn here. Thank you, I do. Thank All you. right, good, good, Lenny, awesome. All right, good, because you know, I took the time to write out your four notes. <laughs> Great. Well, do I get a medal for showing up? <laughs> well, yeah, you, got a big, you got a big medal right there in your hand, see? Yeah, that's right. I just okay. want to know if this is the same for the banana phone as well. <laughs> <laughs> the banana phone is in your concert key right here. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, actually, thinking back to uh, my daughter's childhood, um, they had a clarinet solo on the banana phone song. So I guess that puts you in B flat there, Ken. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna play this track. And what I want you to do is nobody can hear you. I just want you to improvise using only your four notes. Okay, and use your ear. Let's see if it works. Give it just a second here to load. I think you need to make it louder. I, yeah, I haven't started it yet here, still loading. All right, can you see your notes still? Okay, ready? Whoop. All right. One, two, three, four. <laughs> stuff did it work did, was it all the right notes did the notes sound good yeah well they, I, the, the notes meshed what i played was pretty trite but you know <laughs> I for, mean, me, it, for me it was um it was fine i liked it but 
I kept wanting to put a D in there and it seemed okay when I did. Yeah, it will. And that you're actually giving us the perfect segue. You just oh. stole, um, you just stole Eddie's job of great segues because, um, that's exactly the next thing I'm going to have you do, Myrna. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that right down here, uh, the next paragraph, the connection to scales. So scales are just chords with connecting notes added to connect the chord tones. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you think about you adding that D, well, that's just the note in between these two chord tones. It's a, it, we think of it as a connector note, okay? Yeah. Now some connector notes sound better than others. If I played, um, I don't know, an, a C sharp here, it might not sound as good as the D, right? But it That's might, maybe my ear hears that. There's nothing wrong with that. But um, it depends what we think sounds better. And that's where you're gonna use your ears. You're gonna use your ears to figure out which connector notes you like. Or you can experiment with scales you already know uh, that incorporate these chord tones, okay? So we're gonna try the same thing now, but uh, we're gonna use the same chord tones and the, uh, the, the same chords and the same chord tones. But this time you're gonna use your ear to find connector notes like Myrna did. Um, connector notes that you like in between the chord tones. Okay, so let's try the same thing, adding connector notes using your ear to find ones you like. Ready? Go ahead and make sure you're on mute. And we'll start this over again. One, two, three, four. <laughs> that sounded pretty good in between those chord tones. Thumbs up. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Awesome. So these tracks, I'm going to, uh, you can, they're linked, okay? So in the handout I sent you, if you're looking at it on your computer, you should be able to click the, um, the link and still access these tracks so that you can practice this on your own uh, at home, okay? Great, if anybody has issues accessing them, just let me know and I'll send you the file, okay? All right, does anybody have any questions so far? How do we access the recording? Um, you should just be able to just click the link in the handout that I sent you. I'm sorry, um, I meant the recording that you're doing of this session. Oh, sure. Those will be uploaded to the IHC um, uh, website. There's uh, an area where they're upload it, and we'll, we will also link it in the, uh, put a link to it on the Facebook page, the Klezmer Facebook page. Cool. Yeah, other questions? Okay, cool, let's move on then. All right, we're gonna try the same thing we just did, but this time we're going to try it with a minor chord. So uh, make sure your mic is on mute again. And here, we're gonna do the same thing with C minor. So what changes between C um, six and C minor seven are two notes. The, th the third note of the chord, which is the second note of, the, of this, it looks like the second note of the chord, but we call it the third. And then this last note up here, it was an A, now it's a B flat. So this is a half step lower, this is a half step higher. Everybody good on your new notes? 
go ahead and play your four new notes just on your own real quick. Make sure that you got all the right notes. Okay, I'm going to start the track and you are just using these four notes. Now, since you already know where I'm going to go with it, if you feel good about those four notes, then you can go ahead and start using your ear to find connector notes and melodies that you like. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> You guys groove into it. So Jamie Abersold put all of these tracks together. Um, I am borrowing them. He typically doesn't mind when we ask him if we can borrow tracks, so hopefully he doesn't mind that we borrowed this. Um, but just to, let, to give credit to him for that. So does anyone have any questions how you can kind of use your ear to find melodies starting with these chord tones and even incorporating connector notes or scale sounds that you're familiar with already. Any questions at all? Yeah, I, I understand the concept. The thing that's always been really difficult for me is to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, think of an idea in my head or to sing it and then translate it to the instrument. That's really hard to do because it just sounds really uh, very elementary, you know, I try this, it's like, you know, I mean, I've heard jazz, but when I try it, it's like, well, I'm just kind of hitting this, the chord tones and uh, adding a few chromatic stuff, chromatic things in there. And it's just, you know, it's not too interesting. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm so glad you brought that up, Lenny, because again, you, uh, you just stole Eddie's job because that was a perfect segue to our, our next uh, topic that we're going to talk about here. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll just jump to that. Let's see. Well, here, let me show you what, what this is going to be. I don't want to spend too much time on this thing, but what you're asking about is, is we're definitely going to address that. Okay. That's a great question. Um, so right now we're just working on playing what's called modally, where we just have like one chord and we're just worried about playing over one chord. Okay. Um, but remember I said that they're called chord changes because the chords can change oftentimes. And when these chords change, you have to change with them. We're going to look at that a lot next week, but I kind of want to give you just a quick preview of what that's going to look like. Okay. I want you to get comfortable with just one chord at a time first, but here's what this can look like. Um, let's just look at concert key right now and then I'll show you the rest of the keys. But here's a slow blues in G. And um, so for C instruments, you'll have a G7, then a C7, G7. And this means you repeat the same chord that you just played in the previous measure, okay? Each one of these squares here is a measure. So one, two, three, four, and then here's measure five down here. So G7, C7, G7, G7, C7, C7, G7, G7, D7, C7, G7, G7. So how many measures do we have there? 
If it's blues, I'm guessing it's 12 bars. Yeah, it's 12 bars, yep. And we can have more or less in blues, but 12 bars is your standard, that's your standard form. So what I've done here, and I'll make it so we can see all of this on one screen, um, is I have, is that too small um, for you or can you blow up your own screen? You can, you can forget about showing the F instrument. I have that on another screen, so make it okay. a little easier so people can. All right, I can do that. Let's see, how's that for everyone? Is that okay? Give me a thumbs up if that's all right. You can read that. Okay, good. All right, so what I've done over on this side is I've just written out, there's only three chords here. It looks like a lot more chords, but actually, look, you got G7, you got C7. The only other chord here is D7. There's only three chords. So I've written out what each one of those three chords is here. They're not in any particular order. Um, that's just how I had to fit it on there for a word, okay? B flat instruments are here, E flat instruments and F instruments. So go ahead and make sure you're on mute and I want you to just play through each of your three chords one at a time just to make sure you've got all the right notes under your fingers there. Yeah, and I'm going to say, um, uh, Joel, especially, you've got a lot of sharps in yours, so just be careful. Um, everybody else isn't, doesn't have quite as many sharps, but you've got a lot, a lot of sharps there, so just giving you a heads up there. The D sharp, for sure, watch out for that, and this G sharp over here. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to play this track and, and um, just play chord tones. In, in each of these measures, okay? Don't worry about playing anything creative. You can just play quarter notes. Um, you're just trying to just trying to see, kind of get your brain used to moving. And I'm gonna point on the C version um, to each measure as it goes, okay? All right, let's try that. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry. Ah! Okay, hold on. Dogs, calm down. This is not the time. All right, let's try this again. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Well, it's easy to hear the chord changes, but uh, I was trying to like do an arpeggio for each chord and then I sort of got behind and then it's like, oh, well, no, that doesn't go with that chord. So. Yeah, yeah. And the only way to do an arpeggio in each measure is if you just go one, three, five, seven, uh, uh, uh like that you, you can play one three five seven and then you have to jump right to the next chord now doing this i just want to give you a preview today okay this is just a preview of what it's like to process as the chords change 
don't get too worried about this because next week we're going to take a much more structured approach um, to playing chord changes, okay? This is just a sneak peek at this um, process here, okay? Um, do you have any questions about this before we go on to uh, the next section about ears and ear training? Any questions at all? Everybody still with me? Okay, good. All right, well, we're gonna go on to the next section then. Um, like I said, we'll look at that in more depth next week. So exactly uh, what Lenny was talking about, ear training. Um, the more you practice playing these chords and scales and improvising with the chords and scales, the more your ears will start to hear the melodies, including melodies you already know and new melodies that you invent. First, you're going to try singing what you hear in your head. And then you're going to try to find those melodies on your instrument. That intermediary step of singing what you hear is necessary. And not, um, I don't want you to just start by sing a whole, you know, eight bars or something, and then try to figure that out as too many notes. We have to figure out one note at a time. And we start with the first note. Okay, you gotta find the first note. If you don't find the first note, you can't find the second note. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is, I, I'm, I'm gonna try this in, in live. Um, we're gonna try this together. So somebody, a, a, any volunteer, raise your hand. Carol, great, thanks for uh, volunteering, Carol. Go ahead and unmute. <laughs> okay. All right, Carol. So what I want you to do is um, you're going to just sing um, just a little melody, just something you're making up and uh, just like four, four and four or five notes, something like this. Okay. Uh, just right now? Yeah, sure. Da, 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 da. All right. That was great, Carol. Yes, round of applause, round of applause. All right, so da, that was her first note. Da, 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 da. Right? Mm -hmm. Da, now I gotta find that note on my instrument. Da. Now, okay, so I got my first note. Okay, good. Da, 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 da. No, that wasn't it. Nope, that wasn't it. Okay, that was it. Da, 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 da. I think I found it. Now I'm going to jazz it up a little bit. Okay, so that's how you that's how you use your ear, but you got to sing it. You have to sing it and find that first note. That's the key to everything is find the right first note. Carol, that was beautiful. Thank you for picking such a cool little riff there. <laughs> so don't start by trying to transcribe a concerto out of your head. You got to start with one note. You start with one little phrase, okay? Go through this process. So you got to be patient with it. Um, because it takes time, but the more you do it, the more you'll start hearing and your brain starts hearing patterns. And the most common pattern are these scale tones, these chord tones, okay? So start with these chord tones and then you'll find those connector notes and you'll, you'll get used to what connector notes sound like in between the chord tones. And Lenny, you'll start to be able to tell what is it that I'm hearing in my head. And then when you hear somebody play something, you'll start to know exactly what it is. You may not know what the starting note is, but you'll know it's one, two, one, flat, three, two, one. You'll hear that already before you even go to your instrument. Then you just have to find the starting note and you already know the lick at that point, okay? So that's my advice for that. Does anybody have any questions about that process? It is so good to see all of you guys. I'm, I love doing these things. I'm, I'm so glad that we're doing this. Thank you for all being here. Sorry, that was a little sidetrack. We're glad too. 
<laughs> Good. <laughs> I look forward to it. Me too. Me too. All right. So, um, so just for fun, I know some of you are hungry for more things to practice. So, I stole something else from Jamie Abersold. These are some fun scales that you can learn and practice over dominant seven chords. And you'll need to transpose these uh, for yourself into the different keys. But Jamie Abersold put together this dominant seventh tree of scale choices. Um, these are all scales that you can play over a C7 chord. Okay, in other words, he's taken the chord tones, the C, the E, the G, and the B flat, okay, um, and, he's, and, and he's taken all these different scales that have different connector notes to connect the chord tones, and these are all scales that would fit over those chords, okay. Um, now, I know most of you are familiar with the scale. Uh, we talked about the Mixolydian mode last week, right? That um, I, Lenny had said he'd heard um, called uh, the, um, the dominant, dominant scales or something like this, seven scales. Um, but that was the Mixolydian mode. And they called it here dominant seventh, but he's um, mistaken. It's really just called the Mixolydian mode. Um, there's also a bebop scale, which looks exactly like that, but we add in the regular seven in addition to the flat seven. And that scale sounds pretty cool. I'll play it for you, um, just so you can kind of hear it. Sounds a lot like the Mixolydian. And jazz, that one's used a lot because um, if it, it'll line up symmetrically the chord tones will all line up on downbeats if you go up and down it um, in time. So it's very symmetrical. That's why a lot of jazz musicians will use that scale. Lydian dominant, same thing as the, the Mixolydian scale, but they've raised the fourth note here. Whole tone, it's all whole steps. And it still uses the C, the E, and the B flat but this fifth note changed. Uh, and he says the thirds and sevenths are really the most important ones. So if we change a fifth, it's not a big deal. And I would agree with him on that. Uh, diminished scale, this one's a little bit more complicated, but basically it's just half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. Again, don't get too confused if this isn't your thing, but some of you are kind of nerdy and I know you're gonna wanna practice this. <laughs> teaching it to you. It's all right. I can relate. I am also that nerdy person. Um, diminished whole tone. This is basically um, a mode of your ascending melodic minor scale. Don't get too confused about that either. But another way to look at this is it's half of a diminished scale and half of a whole tone scale. That's why it's called diminished whole tone. So these first four notes here are the same as your diminished scale. And then the next four notes are the same as a whole tone scale. Um, if we were to take this C out and cover it up, it would be uh, an ascending melodic minor scale starting on D flat. So this is this also the seventh mode of an ascending melodic minor scale. Again, if I'm talking over your head right now, don't freak out. This is just for the nerdy scale people here. Next scale, Spanish or Jewish scale. Does anybody recognize this scale here? Anybody at all? Nobody recognizes the scale? If I read ahead, it's a... Oh, yeah, that's right. Was that Barry? <laughs> yeah, it's the Fragish scale. Uh, they're calling it a Jewish scale here, which I think is interesting. Um, I'm sure that it has lots of different names, but yeah, that's our Fragish scale. Same as F harmonic minor. Remember, we said this is the fifth mode of a harmonic minor scale. If we start on F and we go up five notes, that's a C. That's why they started it on a C. Okay, and then of course he put the chromatic scale here because yeah, of course that involves all of those notes as well. So he says you can experiment with all of these over dominant seventh, um, uh, a dominant seventh recording and I'm going to find a good one, uh, a good track. I just couldn't find a good one. Uh, While you're looking that up, 
Let me yeah. ask you, is it the same way up the scale for that number seven as it is down the scale? Yeah, so good stays. question. Yes, this one is because this is a, a mode of the harmonic minor scale. So yeah, this one is the same going up and down. Now, the one that, that would make a lot of sense to change going up and down would be this diminished whole tone because it is a mode of the melodic minor scale. However, we do do it the same going up and going down. In jazz, which is where a lot of these scales are, are being used, in jazz, the melodic minor scale is always played in its ascending form, even when you're descending, which I know is kind of weird. In classical music, the melodic minor, remember, we go up with just, uh, if, however you want to think about it, with just the flat three, and then the regular six and seven, and then we come down flatting the seven and six. Remember, we talked about that that first week. But in jazz, we'll play it the same going up and coming down. And the Fregish is always played uh, the same going up and coming down. So uh, any questions about those fun scales that I know, I already know Lenny and um, definitely Joel are going to practice all these scales this week. <laughs> Everybody is certainly welcome to. Uh, I mean, you know, if it were me, I would just like pick one. Um, let me play these all for you real quick, just so you can get them in your ear and see like, which one do you like? Which one do you want to learn? Okay, so I'm going to start with that first one, which remember isn't really called a dominant seven, it's a mixed leading scale. <laughs> Lydian dominant. That one sounds cool. Okay, no, no singing along, Maxwell. All right, whole tone. That's my favorite one for sure. Diminished. That one's also symmetrical because it has eight notes. Uh, diminished whole tone. Let's see. Sorry, I played the wrong note at the top. Yeah, good. Um, that one's fun. And then, of course, the Fregish scale. And then chromatic. Really, I can play a chromatic scale. Okay, good. Um, what does symmetrical mean again? Uh, I mean, I just mean like, um, like everything can, f like all of your chord tones fall on down beats. Um, but also because we go one and two and three and four and like this, if you go up and then you come down a seven note scale, a different note falls on the downbeat when you come down. Oh. You know what I mean? If you yeah. go up a major scale. Sorry, that's a bebop. There's yeah. different notes that you accent on a downbeat. Yeah. I think a lot of scale, I seem to remember uh, a lot of scale books, like the Perez scale book that I used to play out of and stuff, uh, they would repeat the top notes sometimes. So they yeah. get yeah. symmetry. Yeah. Yeah, they'll repeat the top notes or they'll go up to the ninth and come back down. A lot of them. Right, yeah. You know, something like that. Um, but yeah, the, if it has eight notes or even six notes, it's much more symmetrical. But the seven notes, think about it. All right, there we go. I'm unfrozen now. Okay, so how's everyone doing on all this? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I like. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I like it. Like the whole idea of learning this. 
Wonderful. Okay, so does this this is something you could practice over the next week? Sure. Those tracks. Why okay, not? Good. Good. What and else have I got to do except sew face masks? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're not sewing masks, Lenny? I I am. I am. I hauled my sewing machine out of storage and someone had to show me how to thread it and my seams are getting a little straighter. But as I tell people, I'm not gonna win any prizes at the state fair. But I did make some functional masks that I've been sending to my family. So Me too. Uh, I do have a, one question. Uh, sure. What would be the most useful ones to practice? I mean, you know, I know that the, the uh, Klezmer scale, sure, but how about the others? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, I mean, off of that sheet, um, let's look at the sheet again. Maybe the blues? Well, there's no blue scale on here. And, um, uh, but I mean, certainly, I mean, I don't know. Uh, for me, I mean, you, you want, definitely want to practice these Mixolydian ones, I think. And then the logical progression from there, to me, seems to be the bebop scale because it's exactly the same just adding this uh, major seven in it. Um, then for me, the next one, honestly, I would probably go to whole tone scales. They just sound so cool. And there's only two whole tone scales. You know how there's 12 major scales? There's only two whole tone scales because this whole tone scale is the same whether you started on C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, B flat, or C because it's all whole steps. Ah. Yeah, and so there's only one other whole tone scale and that's starting on a, a half step in between any of these notes. So it would be like C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, B. And that's, so that's the other whole tone scale. I think that that has a really cool sound to it. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Um, and you'll, if you like Debussy or Ravel, you'll hear that, it, that French impressionistic sound. Uh, you'll hear that in a lot of that type of modern music. So for me, that's what I would do. I would practice Mixolydian, Bebop, and then probably Whole Tone. Um, of course, Fregish. So, and then obviously you, you want to get through your major scales and a chromatic scale. I mean, those are all important. We're going to go with next week, we're going to look at this stuff a lot and we're going to take a very systematic approach that Eddie, definitely, you definitely want to be here for this one because basically we're going to learn how to walk bass lines over these chord changes. That's like the foundation to improvisation in my personal opinion. So we're all going to learn how to like live in baseland for a while. So this is something Eddie probably is already very familiar and comfortable with, but we're all going to learn how to do that and then take it a step further and improvise some melodies from there. So, um, yeah, thank you for that question. Does anybody else have any other questions about anything? Thank you, Sean. It's just been very useful. Appreciate cool. Yeah. You're welcome. It, uh, was, it was a fun session. Really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, really fun. I have an offer in, if you guys don't mind, I just found a jazz uh, YouTube that I like so much that I would like to share it. So I may, I'll just send a link to the uh, group. Thank you. Thank you, Myrna. So are we signing off? We've got eight minutes. <laughs> we got Sean frozen. Sean froze again. <laughs> frozen. All right. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand why everybody was singing Let It Go. I get it now. <laughs> So it's cold enough outside, you didn't need to freeze your computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Uh, see, I, I have a good excuse for this. When we, we just moved in here, you know, we closed on this house January 30th. And so as soon as we moved in, you know, it was back to work and everything really quickly. So we didn't have time yet to um, hook up internet. So we had, but, but I have an Xfinity account. So I was using the citywide hotspot that you just log in through Xfinity, you know, um, or Comcast or whatever. And so I was using that um, and it wasn't a big deal because I was like, well, we don't stream movies or play games or anything. It wasn't a big deal. And then all of a sudden this all happened and then you realize how important it is to have a good internet <laughs> connection at your own house, you know, with, with a router and everything. And um, yeah, so if I had known, of course, I would have, but I it didn't. It doesn't always work that way. Yeah. I'm on my personal like, hotspot as we speak. Yeah. Yeah, but your internet's and see, awesome. So that's what I've been doing is setting up my hotspot when the Xfinity goes out. Hey, look because it's been very unreliable. So I've been using my hotspot off and on. Hi, Eddie. Hello. I snuck in late. Sorry. <laughs> well, at least you came. Better late than never. You you know all of this already anyway. I don't, but I'm looking forward to you all learning what it's like to be a bass player next week. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah, I, I'm not sure since I moved to my apartment, I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to take out my sousaphone and, and try <laughs> bass lines. I, the horn is a little bit more manageable with my neighbors for the moment. <laughs> oh, oh, try the sousaphone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you should put a mute in it. Uh, well, supposedly they make <laughs> a pillow. They're they're where, not available. Where do you get that from? Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> Humsenberg supposedly makes a sousaphone practice mute, but uh, no one has it. <laughs> so it's it's a the, it's a hypothetical theoretical, you know, like uh, like a unicorn. <laughs> it sounds good though. Just stick the bell out the window. Was. You'd be all set. That's all right. I have options. <laughs> well, um, before we wrap up, if anybody would like me to send them the handout from tonight, if you did not already get it, um, click the chat button at the bottom and just email me your, um, uh, or just send your email address in the chat, and I will send you the handout. Um, right now. Sorry, everybody. I've got another meeting. Not as much fun as this one, a Zoom meeting that I've got to get to. So it's great seeing everybody. I really enjoyed this, Sean. Thank you very much. Peace awesome. out. Okay. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right. Thank you to everybody. And I hope you all have a, a wonderful evening and happy Passover. Thank you. All, all right. right. Yeah. See you next week. Wash all right. See you next week. Wash the hands. <laughs> Wash the hands. <laughs> bye bye. 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 <laughs>